you know, what is this Saturday morning? You could be doing anything on a Saturday morning, and you probably have things on hold this Saturday morning because you chose to come here. And through compassion and a desire to respect the life of Janine and show respect to her family, uh, you came. And I thank you for that. Uh, the Lord will bless you for being here today. Uh, I uh, was Janine and Earl. Uh, I like to say both of them together. Uh, they were good friends uh, of mine. Uh, we went to church together for many years. That's how we met. Uh, they were just really wonderful people, both of them. Uh, but Lacey, uh, Glenn, Lacey, and I guess Eric, too, uh, the three of you somehow worked to get us reconnected uh, when Janine was failing physically. Um, Lacey contacted me and uh, through that contact I was able to have wonderful phone conversations with Janine throughout the last couple of weeks. Uh, really the kind of phone conversations that you don't want to miss in your life. I'll talk about that a little bit later but I'm just so thankful that you reconnected me. Uh, we really shared a lot together and that, that was special to me and I appreciate it. I want, to, I want to take a moment to, to express to Glenn and Lacey first, as Janine's children, that I am very sorry for your loss. Uh, it's so hard to lose a parent. Uh, and, and now I know that both of your parents are with Jesus, praise God. Uh, but I know how hard that is on both of you, because you had a good, close relationship with your parents. I observed you all for many years. You were so much younger when we met, and I could observe you. And there was always a respect for your parents. There was always a, not just respect to do what they said, but a respect like you honored their wisdom, you listened to what they said, you trusted their advice, you, you honored your father and mother. And I saw that in you, and, and I'm sorry for your loss. Eric, I have to say, you know, you've been in their family for over 20 years. You guys have been married 21 years now, it's blows me away, but uh, you've been in this family over 20 years. And Eric and I had a conversation, Eric and Lacey and I, the other day, and Eric's in-laws are much like my in-laws. Uh, you know, you may not know this, you probably do, but you get a bunch of guys together and there's going to be some mother-in-law jokes thrown in there. Uh, Eric and I don't have mother-in-law jokes. Uh, we don't have in-law jokes. Uh, because your in-laws are like my in-laws, we just inherited a second set of parents. And, and we're blessed, and you meant a lot to them. You were like a son. I saw that. I mean, I know you were. Um, but it was an equal admiration society, you know, back and forth. And so, brother, it's not like you're not hurt me. And so I'm sorry. Caitlin is here. Uh, Caitlin, as, as I said to you briefly, I know family relationship can get complicated. But you being here is an act of compassion for which you will be blessed because in complicated family situations it requires love to win out for the family to become a family. And just coming from North Carolina is just one act of compassion that demonstrates, you know, I care about my family. We'll be blessed for it. It's a great example. And for all the grandkids, for Glenn, um, Eric, and Lacey's children, I'm sorry too for your loss. It's your, your grandma. Uh, I'm not trying to make this personal, but I was in a big family and my grandmother lived with us. And like she was really special to me. And so, Many, many years later, you probably don't know this, but I'm a bit older than you. Uh, I still, you know, think about her. I remember things she taught me. I remember times we had together. Um, she used to play the piano when I would sit there and watch her. And just things. You, you all learn a lot from your Oma. And uh, she loved you. I know you love them and love her, but she loves you. And wherever you go in your life, never forget 
that she loved you and that she was proud of you. And, and do the things that make her proud of you always. Remember those things. Don't dismiss them because she's temporarily separated from you. But I am, you know, I am sorry for your losses. It's hard. It's hard. And with that, let me just say a little bit to everybody about grief. I, I mentioned this a little bit back when we were having a prayer, but grief is real. You know, I, I did a lot of counseling in my ministry time, and I've met many people who try to go around grief, or try to suck it up and just plow through grief. You can't do that. I don't care what your age is. Grief is real. And the only way to get through it is to go through it, to experience it. It's like a dark tunnel. Uh, and depending upon where you are or in your relationship with Janine, you may wake up some mornings and just feel like the world has crashed. I mean, it was, what's the point of all this? Uh, just trust in the Lord and keep walking forward. Talk to each other. This is one of the values of a family. You, you know, you, you talk to each other. Husband and wife, we share our feelings when we're hurting. Or there may come times when you snap at each other and then you realize, you know, I'm just angry because my mom's not here. And that's normal. It's normal. The evil one loves to take advantage of that and keep that snapping going. But you just have to Humble yourself. So much of the walk, of everyone's walk with Christ is founded on humility. And in those situations, you just humble yourself and say, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I, I was just upset that my mom was not here to come to this, watch the kids at school, or something, whatever. But the evil one will do that. He's smart, man. He'll try to take advantage of you and your situation. So as much as we love Janine, as much as we all gained from her company, we can, and, and as, as much as we know that she is in heaven, we don't have to fear where she is. She's not suffering it anymore, partly. We don't have to fear that, but still, that does not take away your grief, right? And it won't. You just got to go through the tunnel. And then one day you'll wake up and it's like, yeah, it's a beautiful day today. Everything's good. You'll get through the tunnel, but you don't go it alone. You talk to each other. You lean into each other. And this is one of those experiences in your life where your faith is what you believe <coughs> on. You trust God. Even if you don't know the answers, you may not know the answers. And I think the Lord keeps it that way sometimes. You don't need to know the answers. You need to trust. And this is one of those times where you have to trust. You know, when I was talking to Janine in one of those conversations, I told her this. And uh, I want to share it with you today. There's a, there's a really, uh, it's not a strange verse, but when you first read it, it's like, hmm, that's, that's different. Uh, it's Psalm, in Psalm 116, verse 15. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. And I told her, Janine, that, that, easily applies to some people more than others, but it really applies to you. Because we both knew that the Lord was calling her home. We kept saying, you're going to get promoted soon, all that sort of thing. And uh, I, want to, I just want to share that in, as I wind up this little introduction about grief. Uh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. And you think about that for a second. It doesn't say happy. Is, you know, the Lord's like, hey, man, she's back with me. No, it doesn't say happy. It's not joyful. Like, man, I'm so glad. You know, you know, no, the Lord's not, you know, it's not like that. It's not meant to be like that. The Lord's glad she's home. But that's not the, the, the tenor of that verse. That's not what that verse means. Precious is exquisite. It's special. Special, exquisite in the eyes of the Lord is the death of one of the saints. You know why? Because Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the price for her 
one of his saints, to be with him when her time had come. You see, it's precious in the eyes of the Lord. It's exquisite because of what Jesus has done and because she latched on to Jesus at whatever age, I don't know, but boy, she latched on. And the Lord is saying, you are precious to me. You are one of my saints. My son died for you. You know that. Come on home. And, and, and that version jumped out in my mind in one of my conversations with her. Because that's how I see her. You know, not all preachers or evangelists speak before thousands. You know, there's some Billy Grahams out there, but not everybody's a Billy Graham. Janine, who knows how many lives she touched and preached to because of her faith in Christ. That's her, that was her character. That's who she was. That's how we identify Janine, as a follower of Jesus. And she's precious in the eyes of God. Jesus died for her. And she knew it. And so do we. And so as you grieve, never lose sight of not just where she is, but how she was received. She was received as a precious, exquisite, splendid saint of God because of her faith in Christ. I want to share just a couple of the scriptures. Um, as we just, you know, talk about grief, just for a minute. Um, and I always like to share John 14. And I don't want to, I don't like to just, you know, say it from memory because it's Jesus talking. I don't want to miss a word when Jesus speaks, so I'm going to read it. But this is uh, John 14. It's a great verse. We all know this verse. Probably. Do not let your hearts be troubled. That's what I want you to hear. You, you can and should hurt. But don't be conflicted. But don't let the evil one try to throw trouble in your mind. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust God. Trust in God. That's that faith I was telling you about. In my Father's house, of course this is Jesus speaking, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back to take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am, which is where she is today. You know the place where I'm going. Now, that was a wonderful monologue that Jesus just expressed to the disciples. But I'm so thankful that good old Downing Thomas looked up to his name, and he was willing to say, uh, Wait a minute, I don't think I understand all that. Because we benefited from his question. He said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how do we know the way? Jesus said, I'm the way. I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now we all know that scripture, but weren't you glad that Thomas asked that question anyway? Because I am. <clears throat> Janine is safe. She suffered at the end. She's not suffering now. Trust me. She's not suffering now. Now, in that phone call I had with Eric and Lacey, and I try to meet with the family. I owe you all apology because I try to uh, I try to meet with the family. Both of our schedules were such that I did not do that. I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> but we did have one really good phone call. And in that phone call, you guys told me that Janine really got into Psalm 30 and 31. Now there's more to that story than, than I'm aware of at this point. Um, but I want to share just, I went back to look at those, and I just want to share a few verses from what Janine was studying and being comforted by uh, as the call was getting closer and closer to come home. So I won't read all of it, but just some select portions. So from Psalm 30, I will extol you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. In her case, an enemy could have been her illness or her fear or something. 
Didn't let that happen. Oh Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. She knew where she was going. She's totally healed. Oh Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Praise God. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And then it's from Psalm 31. I'll just read a little bit. In you, O oh Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. Then let me just jump down a little. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. There was a moment, as you grieve, you remember that. That's what she was looking at. That's what you need to hold on to, in part, right there. I trust in you, O Lord. You are my God. My God, my time is in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the, breath, the proud, he pays back and forth. You can do a whole sermon on that right there. But the Lord preserves the faithful. She is not here right now. She is with him. She is faithful. And she won the prize. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. That's where our strength come from, comes from. He is our hope. He's our rock. He's our refuge. Redeem our strength. I can keep going on, but I won't. So we're going to praise the Lord a bit today as we seek comfort and consolation from the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for us, and then Brother Dan is going to come back and sing. Father, forgive me. I know I can go on and on about this because it just charges me up to no end. But I thank you for what you do for us. For the promises you give us, because your promises are true. You know, we don't need, and this family, these friends here, they don't need empty promises today. They don't need uh, anything other than your promises, because they're true. And I pray that we would all cling to you, look to you for strength and comfort as we continue to move forward in Christ. And Father, for the rest of the service, I pray that you are glorified and these fam and the family and these friends are confident. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, yeah. Yeah. 
and you know you lose your mom, your grandma. And that's tough sledding. It's hard, um, but that's the way love is. Love brings us together, and at the same time, it it can create deep pain, but it's not bad pain. Uh, but your parents found uh, their purpose, and so they lived their life purposefully, purposefully. And if you weren't sure, well, how do you know that? Well, they had two children who loved the Lord deeply. They had one of their, uh, their daughter married a godly man, and they had kids who all, you know, if they haven't accepted Christ already, they're on the road. I mean, they're, they're passing this on. But there's a purpose in life, and that's what the purpose is, is to love God and tell others about it. If I can say it's the same thing, that's my purpose in life. Anyway. But let me, let me just talk about life generally for a minute because whenever we're in a situation like this, and I've been sitting where you all are many times, I've, I've always come to the realization that, man, if I don't learn something from this, then I'm just going to walk away today. and I'm going to be hurting, and you know, I'll hear what that guy said, and I'll think about it a little bit, but then I'm just going to jump back into life, and it'll probably get lost somewhere. And we won't have gained anything. And so I think you learn, if, if we take time to learn from what we experience, then that's what helps make our life more purposeful. But let me just explain life uh, in a couple of ways. It's a journey, I keep using that word, and a journey is comprised of experiences, and it's how we react to and what we learn from those experiences that as you continue to combine them, you put them together, you've got a journey, and and that be that be your life story. A better way to look at it, the way I look at it, is you're writing a book. Your life is a book, and a book is made up of different chapters. And in each chapter, there's all kinds of activity and all kinds of decisions and all kinds of things that happen. Some in your control, some out of your control. But you'll come to the end of the chapter. And yeah, and and then you'll start another chapter. Uh, getting out of high school. That's that's the end of a chapter. Start a new chapter. Uh, probably get married, y'all, you know, some one day. That's a new chapter you're starting. Uh, maybe you'll have children. That's a whole other chapter in your life. And all these chapters add up to a book, and that book is your story. And so Janine and well, Janine, I'm sorry, is not Janine. <clears throat> Janine's book. She wrote a book, and her book was about following Jesus. And glorifying Jesus. There's a lot of ways that we can show that she did that, but that's what we remember about her. That's her life. That's who she was. That was the book she wrote. Now, you can write a book yourself uh, if you want to do it yourself. Uh, you can be. You can write a book about a superhero, and you can handle everything yourself. And the bullets will bounce off for a while, and uh, you try to handle it yourself, and uh, you'll be the hero all the time, or so you think. You could, you could write that. Or you could write a mystery. And you can just kind of keep to yourself and you don't want to share anything with anybody and you don't tell anybody what you're thinking. And you just hurt inside and you try to deal with that on your own uh, until that catches up with you. Uh, but then, you know, people around you are like, well, if you talk to Jim, yeah, I talk to him, but you know, he never tells you anything. I don't know what he's thinking. So you could write a mystery. And at the end of your life, it's like, man, he, he was a pretty nice guy, but I don't know anything about him. So you could write a mystery. But I want to challenge you today, because this is one experience in your life. I want you to think about the book you're writing. The book you're writing. Um, it's a good thing for all of us to think about that, because some of us are further along in our book than others. Um, I started a new chapter in my life when my in-laws had moved in with me. Okay, it's a new chapter. Um, and, and we learn from that. But we're all writing a book, the way I look at it. And we're going to look at Janine's book today, and we're going to, I'm just going to take a minute and see what the, what can we, let's just, let's just leaf through her book and see what we can learn uh, from the book she wrote. Um, because hers was all about, at one point, when the chapter started, when she came to Jesus, from then on, it was about loving God, glorifying God, telling others about Him. We're going to do it through uh, compassion, we're going to do it through listening skills, going to do all sorts of things. But that was her book. Her book was based on forgiveness and faithfulness. So, I don't know when she made that commitment, but she was all in. Um, 
So the question becomes, what can we learn from her book? Let's just leaf through her book, okay? And I'm going to tell you all, I keep looking over here because I keep looking at the young, you young guys and girls. And here's something we want to learn. We don't want this to be an empty experience. We don't want this to be something that you forget about. As I told you, she had a great impact on your life. So here's something that you need to learn from this experience. Because you're beginning a new chapter in your book, even if you don't buy my analogy. You're still beginning a new chapter in your life. Life is short, and it will go by quickly. It really will. The Bible even speaks to this. I mean, you know, if you live 70 years, you're good. 80 years, you're fortunate. That type of thing. But, you know, it goes by quickly. People live longer today, but that doesn't necessarily mean it goes any slower. Um, all you guys have to do is ask anybody, ask your parents, and if you don't want to ask them, ask anybody who's 20 years older than you. If, did your life go quickly? It's like, whew, man, blows by. The days go so fast, it's unreal. Janine was only 73. And that's young. And if she were here today, and we were to ask her if she accomplished everything that she wanted to accomplish in her life, I'm sure she'd say no. Uh, she just didn't get to do everything. But that's okay. She wouldn't trade where she is to come back here and do those things. Uh, that's just the way it is. But life is short, and it will go by quickly. And your life, each chapter in your life, is made up of day-to-day -day decisions. You're constantly going to get faced with decisions. Some big, what am I going to do with my life? Some smaller, man, I wonder if I were to go drink beer with those guys. What's, what's that going to hurt? What if I were to jump in this car? I know that guy's been drinking. We'll probably get home all right. That's one of those decisions. Decisions I got all the time. You're going to get them all the time. Um, you do not want to write a book of regret. You don't want to go back to a previous chapter and say, man, what was I thinking? I wish I could do that. Look at that jam on there now. You go forward. It's really hard to back up in life. You might be able to back up a little bit. And about, about as far as you can go is to apologize and humble yourself and then move forward again. But you're not going to go way back on those decisions. Man, I'm going to rectify that. that. That boy's gone. So you have to think forward, and you have to be thinking all the time. There's a great verse, also in Psalms, Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days correctly, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. I love that verse for a couple of reasons. It's clear that we need to learn, we need to be taught, how to make wise decisions, how to use our days wisely. Or it wouldn't say that. Teach us. So if we seek after the truth, and Jesus said, I am the truth. If we seek after truth, we will make wiser decisions, which would lead me to conclude that we would make the most of that day. So seek the truth so that you may learn to make wise decisions because you, all of us, will be, your next birthday is coming faster than you can imagine. It's coming quick. So use each day wisely. And, and we hear this all the time, every day's a gift, every day's a gift, every day's a gift. And you know that flippantly we probably, yeah, yeah, it really is, it really is. Good way to look at that, I want you to think about a time when you were sick, when like you had the flu or something, you woke up and you thought, man, I feel like I'm dying. And then when you got well, it was like, yeah, today is going to be a great day. I feel fantastic. I'm back. That's the way you want to go into every day. Like, yes, Lord, it's a new day. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to serve you with it because I want to make this day count. I'm going to invest it in my own wisdom. And I think you'd be wise to heed that advice because your life will go faster than you think it will. It just does. Let me give you a couple things to think about, too, as you go along the way. The Bible tells us, do not worry. Jesus said, don't worry. He told us that for a reason. 
90% of what we worry about never happens. Don't worry. Live in faith. Trust Jesus. He will, he will guide you. For you, fellas, I want to say this. Be confident of yourself. You can all do more than you think you can. I can look back and wish I were more confident in certain ways. And I probably would have accomplished more or done better in a certain thing. But I can tell you honestly, be confident. You can, you can do anything you put your mind to. So all of you realize that. Um, and with the Lord, nothing is impossible. It's not. It's really not. I saw a little thing on TV saying the word even says I'm possible. Well, it's not up to me, but it is possible if we have our faith in Jesus. We can learn that from Janine's life. Because I'm telling you, I talked to her, and she, she and I both spoke about our age. I'm like, wow, man, they've been married 21 years. Wow, really? How old are they kids? Yeah, oh, wow, I can't believe how old we are. Yeah, it just flies by. And you want to make it count. You want to go through one time. Make it count. Another thing we can learn from Janine's life, we should love one another. Love one another. And I don't say that flippantly either. Because this is one of her outstanding qualities. She had a love that emanated from her. She did. She was gentle. She was um, compassionate. She was kind. Um, she loved people. You know, in that Psalm 30, I have to relay this story. That's a really neat little story. Uh, Eric Lacey told me. I, I guess, Eric, you were reading the Psalms too. She, he was reading those Psalm 30 and 31, and of course, Lacey's crying, man. This is her mama here. So she's crying, and Janine's laying there listening, and at some point, she just looked up at Lacey and said, look, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm, not, I'm not going. I'm still here. But when they told me that, I thought that was, that was a really neat story because of this one thought that I had. Well, well there's a couple of reasons, but the main thing is, she wouldn't, this is another thing, she had no fear of dying. First John 4 tells us there's no fear, there's no fear in death. Not, not, not a fear in Jesus. So she didn't have a fear of dying because she had lived her life right and she had loved other people and she was deeply loved. I mean, Lacey was crying because she loved her mom. And she was, you know, sorry to see her getting called home. Separation, I get all that. Um, so deeply she loved her. You know, in Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus gave us a sermon on the Mount. It's the greatest sermon you ever, ever, the great, greatest sermon ever recorded. Uh, but if you want to really learn how to live, you, you read that, really dive into the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is teaching us how to live. And in one of the uh, sections of Matthew 7, he taught, taught something uh, that Janine really excelled at, I think, from my observation, was uh, do not judge lest you be judged. We're not here to judge other people. We live in a polarized world. You know, you're either for me, against me, you love me, you hate me, you know, uh, all that. Very polarized world we live in. We're not here to judge. It's the Lord's job to judge. We are here to love the Lord, glorify Him, tell others about Him. And you can't do that if you don't Love other people if you don't. I mean, if you judge them, uh, you're not getting anywhere with the love part. So let's try to let's try to be like Janine and love one another. There's enough hate in this world. Heaven sakes, there's enough hate in this world. Love one another, and you know that's true for family and it's true for friends. It's very important uh, when you have a hard time with someone. You're at odds or you have an argument, whatever, in a marriage relationship or just parent, child, brothers, whatever it is. The evil one will always want to exploit that. He wants to drive that wedge as far and as deep as he can. It doesn't matter if it's a friendship, a marital relationship, a parental child relationship, it doesn't matter. He is going to divide. And John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to kill and steal and destroy. And he's going to try to steal whatever he can from you. And so 
humble yourselves. Um, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Not just apologize, but uh, heal the relationship. I can't think of the word I was searching for. Uh, humble yourselves. Heal the relationship. Show love to one another. That's hard to do when you're in the midst of the fight. And remember that this is this is one day. I'm not going to let the evil one steal this day. And if I have to humble myself, even if I disagree with you, I am going to repair this relationship because I love you. I'm not going to let the evil one drive a wedge. I think Janine was really good at that. I really do. And of course, all of this is predicated upon one other thing, and this is the third thing we can learn from her. Many of us know this, but I would be remiss if I didn't say it. This the first thing you got to do in your life is you have to love Jesus. I don't mean make a decision to follow him. I mean love Jesus. He is first. You, that is your purpose in life, is to glorify God and tell others about him. You love Jesus. You give your life to him. You serve him. You love others like he loves them. That's a life of purpose, no matter what you do for a profession or anything like that. That is what emanated from her. That man, her love for Jesus, it emanated in a soft, all-embracing, uh, gentle, compassionate way. That emanated from her. She loved the Lord. And as, as we write the chapters of our book, make each chapter end on that note. No matter what the chapter is about, do your best to end that chapter on the love of God which helped resolve this problem or give me the direction I need or find what I was looking for. Everything is built on a life of purpose devoted to Christ. It truly is. And that's what the Bible's all about. That's why God sent His only Son to die on the cross, to offer forgiveness for all of us. Matthew 16, 26 is a great verse. What does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul. And then they went on to say, well, what can a man gain in exchange for his soul? Sounds like our soul is pretty important. So as we try to ascertain how we're going to move forward from this experience, Let's try to learn from your own mom, from your mom, from your mother-in-law, from your friend. Let's try to learn about the value of each day and invest our time like she did. Let's love one another like Jesus would want us to. Let's follow his example because we're going to love Jesus first. And you know, there may be somebody here that has no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to loving Jesus. I'll talk to you about it. I'll be glad to. If you're contemplating it, I'll be glad to talk to you about all the ramifications of what it means to make a commitment to Christ. But if you have made a commitment to Christ, make it your purpose to live for Jesus. Not flippantly, not living Monday through Saturday the way you want, going to church on Sunday and open up. Forget that. Church isn't going to save you. Jesus will save you. So I'll be glad to talk to you about Jesus. But that's what Janine meant to me. All of those things. That's what her friendship meant to me. And I'm sure to all of you. And so, as I conclude today, and Dan's going to sing one more song, I want to conclude again by just expressing my sympathies to all of you, thanking you for allowing me just to share a little bit of my heart today. And I appreciate that. And um, to know that even when I leave here, I'll pray, I'm praying for all of you. I don't know the spiritual status of all of you. I know you love Janine, and she had an impact on your life. And I know you grieve it. I can pray about all those things, and I will. But uh, as Dan comes back to close us out with just a marvelous song, um, just know that this woman lived a life of purpose. And look at her life. Learn from it. Follow the footsteps.
you know, uh, I was thinking when Dan was singing, I can imagine Janine sitting there with just that smile on her face, singing along with that song. I mean, how great that are. That, that is how, I mean, she understood that. And that's one thing I love about it. But I can visualize her just sitting there smiling, not saying a word to anybody, just taking that all in. Thank you guys, you did a great job today. Um, you know, as we leave here today, um, remember this family, um, they're grieving and they're going to be grieving. And um, so let's hold each other up uh, and remember one another. And remember your times with her. The Bible makes it clear that as a follower of Jesus, this is a temporary separation, which is a beautiful thing. It's, it's a temporary separation. You will see Janine again. You see your home again. But don't forget, between now and then, as you write these chapters, don't forget she was proud of you. I'm talking to you, all of you. She's proud of you. She loves you. And you do the same for her. Always make her proud of you. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your promises. You know, I appreciate the opportunity to share some thoughts today, but I believe Dan and uh, the musical accompaniment spoke the real sermon today on all three of those songs. I really thank you, Father, for how you speak to us, whether through the scriptures, through other people, through song, and through all of those mediums and many more, I pray that you would comfort these who are here, those that maybe would like to have been here but are not, but all who are grieving the loss of this good and godly woman. Married, Earl, promised to stay true to him till death do his part, they did that. Through thick and thin, they worked together, loved their children, led their children, lived as an example through hard times, times of coasting down the hill, at times of climbing up the mountain. She never gave up on her faith, and she never failed to exemplify her faith to all who were around her. Let us look to her as we look to you, Jesus, for our example. And let us learn. And as we move forward from this place in our individual lives, let us uh, follow their example and do good as well. In Jesus' name, amen.
here. 